Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with animator extraordinaire, Mr. Preston Powell, going to show us how to make a jack-o'-lantern right in time for Halloween. So let's give it up, Mr. Powell. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Cheering for myself there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so when we start a new scene, we have a, the start, the default cube, and we're just going to get rid of that by hitting delete or X on the keyboard. And uh, what we're going to use is we're going to go to add, and we're going to use a UV sphere as our base for the pumpkin. We don't want to move this just yet. We want to adjust the, the segments and the rings around that. Um, and we're, I remembered what you did last time. Yeah, I remember what I did last time. So we have 64. Usually by default, this is 32, and this is uh, 16. And so I just adjusted those and raised that to 64 and 32. So I had uh, a little bit more geometry to work with. And we, where we are going to need that with uh, the pumpkin that we're going to create. So make sure that you change uh, the segments to 64 and then, then the rings to 32. Uh, and then we can go over here and scale this. And you'll notice this will disappear once we start to uh, move the object around. And unfortunately, it's gone forever once we once we do that. So if that happens, then you have to create a new UV sphere. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and scale this bad boy up. And I'm going to bring it above the above the grid. You got to go down to Payson to get a pumpkin of that size. Yeah, and you get it for two bucks. It's a really great deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm in object mode right now. I'm going to hit Tab so I can go into edit mode. And then I want to go down here to this menu right here, and I can select edge mode. Another great way of doing this, too, if you like hotkeys, is control, tab, and that's going to bring up a, a floating menu. And you can... Ooh, you I can, like me some hotkeys. <laughs> so hotkeys are hot. Uh, <laughs> what is it again? It's control, control, tab. Uh -huh. And then we'll select edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the edges around here so we can create, uh, what is it, the pleats? Uh, in the in the pumpkin, uh -huh. so I'm holding down the middle mouse and shift so I can I can uh, pan. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, and then right click uh -huh. on these uh, edge loops here. Now they're dead ending at the top because there's triangles; they all dead end. So don't worry about that too much. And then I'm going to go through and just Pick random segments. Here. You're holding Alt, Shift, and right click. And right click. Okay. I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button. So it's actually probably best to look at this from the top so you can see where your segments are at because we're going to vary the thickness on some of these just to give the illusion that this is an organic uh, pumpkin. Some of these are going to stay pretty standard. So you can, you can jump around. Uh, just don't try to be too random, then it will be a little, then it'll kind of be weird. Mm -hmm. So some of them are going to be wider than others, some thinner. And I'm happy with that. I think that's, that's fine there. I approve as well. Yeah. <laughs> but the question is, is it Gephardt approved? <laughs> is Gephardt approved this digital pumpkin? So right now it just kind of looks like a basketball, and uh, we want we want to change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit S on the uh, keyboard to scale, and I'm going to pull those in. And we want to look at the top and the bottom. Right now it looks kind of extreme, but um, it's okay. So we're going to do a few things to soften this out here. Mm -hmm. So I just want to look around and make sure I'm happy with the segments. Very happy. Yeah, it looks good. So the next thing I want to do is hit A on the keyboard. That's going to select all the faces. And I'm going to show you a little trick here. We're going to smooth the vertices. So I'm going to go to Smooth Vertex mm -hmm. and click on that a couple times. Ooh. And that's going to round out the pumpkin. Yeah quite a bit, makes makes it look quite nice on that. Um, now if you want to add, some pumpkins have, um, I'm going to hold down 
Alt, so I can select this seam here. Sometimes they have pleats within pleats, so I can actually grab this and scale this in a little bit, just to add, just to add a little bit more character. I find that if if ever while modeling you find out that you are manipulating pleats within pleats, the you just want to buckle up and take a deep breath and hold on for the ride of your life. <laughs> I mean, that's when things get really exciting. Uh, uh, they definitely, definitely get very interesting. So you're just hitting S each time to, to scale that inwards a little bit. Yeah, just add a little additional uh, character there. And that's up to you. Sometimes, sometimes that works. If you like a nice rounded um, segment here like that, that's fine. Uh, you can keep that. Uh, but the problem is with this pumpkin right now is it's too round. So here's what we're going to do about that. This can get tricky, so I'm just going to go slow. I'm going to go to, uh, I want to deselect this here, so I'm going to hit A to deselect. But we want to go down to vertex mode and select that. Uh -huh. um, when we've got a lot of geometry like this, sometimes it's really difficult to uh, pinpoint or pick a certain uh, vertice. So the way that I solve this is I hit Z and go to wireframe mode. That way I can go in and select that vertex really easily. Mm. Then I'm going to hold shift so I can make multiple selection from the top and mm -hmm. bottom there. Mm -hmm. Then I can hit Z again to bring back the shading on that. Okay, this is how we're going to shape the pumpkin overall. We're going to go down here and there's a little radio button. We're going to click on that and we're going to enable proportional, proportional editing. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a roller coaster ride. And we're going to go over here to the side and we're going to go to sharp. Oh boy. Here yeah, it comes. There it comes. Going to hit S on the keyboard. Going to hold down the. Okay, let me do that again. I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and see how that's, that's pulling that in and it's kind of just caving in a little bit. And is it doing the same on the bottom? And it should be doing the same on the bottom. Let me orbit around here. And scale see how mm -hmm. it's doing the same mm -hmm. on the bottom but the thing that we want to do is we want to adjust the um, the strength of this um, so here's the proportional size uh, I can actually adjust that here uh, we actually should see I kind of move this here so I'm gonna go uh, control Z and go back a little bit. Um, what we want to do is change the size of or the influence of our proportional edit. So I'm going to hit scale again and if I grab the hold down the middle mouse wheel you see this little white line and that's mm -hmm. how much strength or how much area that that's uh, affecting here. Or we can go down to the menu here and adjust the proportional size. So let's go with 10. Is that changing <clears throat> anything there? I wonder if the number locks. Oh, number lock is turned off. Let me change. Let me select this up here. So I've got 10. And let me try to proportionally scale this. <clears throat> So a little, little bit better. On a newer version, it gives you the brush, the actual kind of a, the brush size here. So it looks like it got reset. So I'm going to change this to 50. Hopefully this will work. Oh, got reset again. Oh. Where did it hit return? There we go. Okay, so this is not working the way that I want it to. 
what it's supposed to be doing is uh, it's supposed to be scaling down the whole pumpkin. Proportional editing is, is really good. I mean, not right now, but uh, <laughs> if you want to edit the whole object, and then what it does is it has a scale from an area where it's going to affect it the most, and then it's going to just deteriorate. So it allows us to move multiple or affect multiple vertices uh, at once. So hopefully I can figure out how this works. Another thing we can do, let me show you a helpful tool. Um, <clears throat> is there a number lock on this or a... I don't know why they're not working. So I'm going to use command. I'm going to see if this works here. Uh, over in the keypad, you should be able to hold either control. Yeah, there we go. Control and then plus, and that's going to um, scale up a selection. If you have control minus, that's going to scale down a selection. And since we have proportional editing turned on, hopefully um, this will help a little bit. So with a selection, so you can, you can distort your pumpkin uh, quite a bit. Uh, let me actually shrink this selection here. I'm just going to get the, the top and scale that down. And I can control. And I'm actually going to go into scale and then Z and strain it there. And bring that down and shape it out that way. Mm. Uh, I'm going to hold down control, bring that back here. And I'm actually going to scale this up a little bit and then bring this bring this down. I'm kind of cheating um, with this because with proportional editing, oh, I've actually moved that that bottom a little bit. Let's bring that we'll bring that one back up or uh, deselect and then uh, go back in and select this hit Z and select that and then we're just going to grow the selection and I'll just push this back in. Same with this guy here. Go and select that there. Grow the selection. You can even say in wireframe mode if you would like. Oh, there it is right there. Now it's showing up. It wasn't showing up before. Now it has. Now if you see me roll the mouse wheel, that's the range of influence. Oh. So now it's showing up. It wasn't showing up before. I'm glad it showed, decided to show up now. Uh, now if you see if I move that, it's going to act within that influence. So we can actually, uh, we're going to use this to shape shape the pumpkin. I'm going to hit control minus. Use that a little bit more, even more. I just want to sink that in. And we'll just use that to shape the pumpkin. You can use it at any part of the pumpkin. Uh, for instance, down here at the base, I'm going to hit down control, grow the selection. And I'm just going to scale this up a little bit, make it a little, a little fatter down here at the bottom. But you can really do anything with it. Um, for instance, I'm going to select the top here, grow the selection. I'm going to grab this and pull this out. So if you want a taller pumpkin, like that, yeah. works quite works quite well. And you also can scale it down. Uh, we can, we're going to roll the wheel so it has more influence. You really can create any pumpkin you want. Uh -huh. I kind of like that. <clears throat> Brandon, what do you think? Um... Right there, let's do it. Okay, that's good. So, uh, just make sure that you turn off proportional editing when you're done. Otherwise, you'll be <laughs> adjusting some parts of the pumpkin. You're like, why is it? Why is it doing that? Uh, I think I'm just going to adjust the bottom here real quick by selecting that, growing the selection. Actually, uh, I'll just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to turn shading back on so we can take a look. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is this was stretched quite a bit right here. I'm going to go over to loop cut and slide. 
and add a segment right there. I'm also going to hit A and go back here to smooth vertex. It needs to be smoothed a little bit. And then I'm going to hit tab to go back to object mode. And you notice that it's quite blocky. The normals are frayed, so we want to adjust that a little bit. So we're going to go over here and to shading and select smooth <clears throat> and smooth that out a little bit. Now you're looking at this and saying to yourself, hey, this is this is washed out. Um, we need some more definition. And you're right. So to add a little bit of definition, we're going to go over here to this wrench. And this is our modifiers. We're going to add a modifier called subdivision surface. We're going to click on that, and you notice immediately it's brought out the pleats. Mm -hmm. So we're going to actually subdivide it a couple times. We're just one, two. In the viewport and the render, we're going to bring that up to three. And adjust that there. <clears throat> you want to make sure that you're on Catmull Clark and not Simple. If we go over to Simple, it's going to make it look horrible. Garbage. Garbage, absolute garbage. Catmull Clark, they know how to subdivide stuff. <clears throat> yep. And as you can tell, Catmull, it's probably named after Ed Catmull, um, which is awesome. So we've got, we've got the base of our pumpkin here. Now we need a stem. Don't worry about this right here, because the stem is going to cover this. <laughs> so it's kind of really wrinkly. Um, at the bottom, one thing that we can do at the bottom of the pumpkin is select that vertex. See how I'm having a hard time there? Uh, I'm going to turn on this so I can select that. Uh, one thing we can do at the bottom so it's not cr so crinkly is uh, grow the selection. Select the middle, that uh, vertice in the middle, uh, grow the selection, and then you can actually go over here to smooth the vertices a few times, and then we can hit Z and see how that, that uh, loosens those up quite a bit down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you can continue to do that even more so if you would, if you would like. Okay, at this point, um, we're going to create a stem. So uh, here's another short key for you. Shift A is going to bring up your add menu. And we're going to just add a cylinder. Drag it over here so we can see it. We're going to create a stem. Um, actually, I'm going to have to recreate the stem. Sorry, guys. There's a few things I needed to do with that. Here's the hotkey again, Shift A. We can go to mesh. And select that cylinder. Uh, down here, uh, I don't know why Blender does this. It gives you a menu and then takes away once you move it. Uh, but we're going to go down here to Angon and we're going to change this from Angon to Triangle Fan. This is important. This is going to allow us to give more shape and definition to the top of the vine, especially where it's broken off from the plant. So I'm going to drag this over. If I have I hit tab, you can see what I mean. We've got a wagon wheel or, or the triangle fan as it, as it says right there. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit. And uh, I'm going to hit tab to go back to edit mode. I'm going to hit C on the keyboard to select the top. Actually, I need to deselect by hitting A. Then I can hit C and I can um, select the vertex there, but that's not what I want. I want to select faces. So I'm going to go down here and select faces, then C select, and then just click once, and it selects all those faces at the top. I'm going to hit S to scale after I right click. And I'm still in proportional editing. This is the very thing that you want to avoid. So we're going to go back here down to the radio bo button and hit disable. It's going to allow me to scale up and scale down. And I'm just going to shape the stem here. Probably don't want to scale down that too much. But probably right there is fine. <clears throat> uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, rotate. So I'm going to hit R to rotate and then Z and allow us to add a little twist there. Mm -hmm. And then we 
we're going to hit loop cut and slide, we're going to add a loop cut right down the middle. And we're going to hit S to scale in and scale that in. So we're just doing, doing the basics right now. Uh, the next thing, we could have done this earlier, but the next thing I'm going to hold down Alt and select loops, every other loop, and I can alternate. Actually, Alt and Shift, I keep uh, skipping here. And we can just go around and select these edges. So I notice you're orbiting kind of around the center of the pumpkin. So when you try and orbit, eventually the pumpkin's going to get in the way, right? Yeah. Is there a way to orbit is. around just that stem? Yeah, we just zoom in. We can we can bring it in here. Or I can do my selections up top. I did. That's a good point. I did leave it really close, and I should have pulled that out a little bit further. Um, so what I'm going to do is just select these on top here. Huh? And then um, I'm going to hit scale, and I can scale them out or scale them in. Scaling in seems to work really good. It gives us a nice little pattern down there at the at the base. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to deselect those. I'm going to get the circle select tool. I'm going to select the faces here because I'm going to do something. Uh, I'm going to select those. Then I'm going to hit E to um, extrude. Should be able to. Oh, let me get rid of the circles. If you're using circle select, you have to right click to get out of it. Then I'm going to hit E to extrude, and then I'm going to scale, scale that, scale that in, and then push that down or you know up. Up seems to work to give it more of a like it's been broken off. And we have our our segments here. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to hit A and just scale this out a little bit. Uh, down at the base, again, we could use uh, circle select. After hitting A, we're going to hit circle select. And we can scale that up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to select those there. And then right click, and then we can, we can scale to give it uh, a larger base. Oh, probably not that large. <laughs> But something, something, something like that. Um, if you want to add, since we have this selected, if you want to add additional twists there, rotate on Z, and then just actually rotate it, maybe tip it a little bit. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to add some more twists here to the stem, and there's several ways of doing that. We could even use modifiers uh, to adjust things. Rotate on Z. Whoa, a little too much there. Go back here to faces. I'm going to do a circle select. Should have did this way. I already had it selected. And of course, you can orbit, uh, orbit around and change things here. And I'm just going to kind of right click and scale, scale up a little bit. If you want to add some more edge loops to add um, more character, uh, you can do that too. You know, right there. But I'm going to call it, for right now, I'm going to call it good. I'm going to hit tab. <clears throat> I will go over here and hit smooth on shading. And then I'm just going to scale it up. Now, since this is over here and the pumpkin's over here, we're going to use a little tool called snapping, and I'm going to click on it there, and we're going to snap to vertices. Then I'm going to get the move tool, and it should snap to the pumpkin. So then it will snap over here. Um, and what it's doing is just snapping to vertices. So it's just going to follow the contour of the pumpkin, and then I can just bring that up here. That was a really long stem. So <laughs> what I'm going to do... <laughs> I'm going to fix this real quick. I'm going to hit scale, and then I'm going to hit Z, and I'm going to make it squatty. There we go. I'm happy with that. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got our pumpkin and our stem modeled and ready to go. 
Um, now you can do the same thing with the pumpkin that I did with the stem is you can actually select those vertices, grow the selection, and actually twist the pumpkin to add a little bit more character. But right now I'm happy with this. So this is the end of the modeling pumpkin tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to jump in and carve the face.